Hey guys, I have a real treat for you today. I am going to slowly work on Blanco tequila. And I do have some Añejo, some Reposado. Uh, I got into tequila very slowly and incrementally. I'm still learning more about it. I want to be able to educate you on the distillation process, how it's made, the pina, all the things that go into it. I think tequila is a wonderful drink. I think it's equally as complex as something, say, like scotch. Um, but it's also closer to me since I'm in Texas, closer to Mexico. And we have a great bottle today that is Suerte. This was something that I found from a couple of lovely gentlemen on TikTok, who uh, the Tequila Collective and another gentleman whose name I cannot recall for whatever reason. Um, I followed them and would get recommendations on tequila, which I would write down. Uh, the Tequila Collective specifically uh, selected and recommended Suerte. I wanted to try it. This is probably the third bottle that I have bought. Um, absolutely amazing for, I think, $28 a bottle. It's a great sipping tequila. If you're looking for something that's tasty, that's not going to break the budget, this is absolutely a must try. I'm having massive debates internally about what my favorite is because I've sampled five or six different Blancos. And after I review this and a handful of others, I'm probably going to put them up side by side so I can compare and contrast the flavor profiles. But absolutely amazing. I would never look down on you for bringing a bottle of this. I think this is a great bottle if you wanted to go to a party and introduce people to sipping tequila and do so on a budget. You're not wanting to spend $100 a bottle. You know, 28, it's very reasonably priced for the tequila that you are getting. There was a little bit of information on Suerte's website. I just wanted to scroll through that real quick. And I'm learning uh, as I go, um, you know, how is tequila made? We know it's made from Blue Weber Agave. How is it distilled? How is it produced? And one of the things that stands out is they're very forthright about the fact that true tequila tastes made better with Tahona. Now, what is a Tahona? A Tahona is essentially a big uh, stone wheel that they use to crush the agave once it's roasted. So let me see if there's some information on its process here. So quick video of them slicing up the pina. Then it looks like they're cutting it in half, putting it in the ovens. The horno, I think is what it's called. And then you saw the tahona being, being crushed there. This is a tequila that I think benefits from what I think of as an almost industrial level manufacturing process. As far as I've seen it at most of the liquor stores I go to, but it's also very high quality. This tequila in particular has notes that I've not picked up from other Blancos. And they're talking about the water uh, from their hometown, Atonilco, El Alto. Um, when they're going through and talking about the different ingredients of how it's made, you know, the Tahona itself, it says it gets oven, I uh, say every pina from the oven gets crushed under a two ton stone slowly and repetitively for 24 hours to release all the juices. Other tequila producers use shredders to process the pinas, but just like a mortar and pestle, the process of crushing releases the true essence of the agave and creates nuances of flavor you cannot achieve otherwise. Now, that is the stuff that I'm interested in, and I can tell you that the tequila does have a different flavor profile. It is slightly different. In fact, if I think of the tequilas, the Blancos that I've had, offhand, I think that this and Fortaleza's Blanco offhand stand out the most for the most unique flavor profile from memory. I'm going to have to sit down and actually compare them side by side, but for many of the Blancos that I'm going to sample, I'm, I'm never going to look down on you if you bring me a bottle. Let's put it that way. So let's go ahead and uh, have a taste. Let's uh, just try this out. You can uh, see the label there. It's a little bit harder to see on the, uh, the white background. But the uh, rabbit, I think, is a symbol of good fortune, if I remember correctly. Uh, but it's a, a very great bottle. It's just very simply, you know, packaged. 
not a lot of frills. Let's go ahead and uh, pour some of this, make sure you can see that well. And I'm going to sample a few, so I'm going to take it easy on myself. I don't want to hurt myself today. Mm. Better on a dark background. It smells like it almost has a, a minerality. Um, there's almost like notes of lime or maybe pepper. And then the thing I notice is there's the, the roasted agave, but there's this note that reminds me of blue ginger or galanga. Galanga is uh, a root herb used in Southeast Asian cuisine, uh, particularly Thai, I think. And it's got an almost medicinal smell to it. It's different than ginger. Um, it, it's more medicinal in its uh, flavor profile. And that medicinal note is the one thing about suerte that I pick up again and again. And I don't know if it's just because of the Tahona and the fact that that is used, but it has a slightly uh, different flavor profile. Um, I've also noticed over time as I've sampled tequilas, I thought that I would be going more towards uh, Añejos, something that was aged and it's got oak and wood and all these other notes. And over time, what I found is I can actually kind of go long and drink a bit more of a Blanco because when it's additive free and there's not notes from the oak and the wood, um, I don't get hung over as easily. So I can easily have a tequila or two and a beer, be good for an evening. Um, if you're looking for something that I think of as very clean, um, you can always make something like margaritas or mixed drinks. I'll never look down on that if you want to make a Palomo, but I really like sipping tequilas and finding high quality additive free sipping tequilas like this has been a godsend. And it seems balanced. There's a little bit of almost like galanga, maybe a little bit of pepper, a little bit of lime, sort of like citrus zest just on the nose. I can taste the roast agave, but it's not like overwhelming, if that makes sense. It's light, uh, spicy, kind of jumps into my nostrils, my nasal passages. And then it mellows very rapidly. Just a wonderful tequila. Again, I think along with Fortaleza, of the Blancos that I've had, I think Suerte and Fortaleza probably have the most nuanced flavor based on my memory. That being said, I've got five or six Blancos that are all excellent, um, that I literally go back and forth of like trying them, you know, back and forth, trying to figure out what I like, what I don't like, and it's tasting notes. This is Mexican medicine, folks. It's good for what ails you. It's light, crisp, refreshing, spicy, hints of uh, citrus and lime. That little bit of that almost like medicinal uh, galanga flavor that uh, is very intriguing to me. And I've not picked that note up on other Blancos for some reason. And I don't know if this is because it's crushed in a Tahona and they make such a, a big deal about that. But in the extraction process, it makes sense that it would make a difference. So they talked about a mortar and pestle and the difference with a shredder and uh, having a molcajete and making salsa in the molcajete where the grinding process is different. It breaks down the uh, compounds and structures of the plant material in a slightly different way than just slicing it or dicing it up. Good drinks, good sipping tequilas. I'll spend as much time smelling them as I do drinking them. 
This is light, crisp, refreshing. I think if uh, you'd like to have uh, a good sipping tequila and then you want a beer afterwards, I think this is an absolutely great uh, tequila to uh, sample that with. I think that this would go well at a party. Um, I haven't personally used this very much to do mixed drinks, but I think that would go inordinately well. But completely additive free, you can look it up on, is it Tequila Matchmaker? Yeah, tequilamatchmaker.com is an app I downloaded. I didn't look them up, but I know it's additive free. I did a lot of research. Yeah, that little bit of fiery, little bit of spicy, but it settles very rapidly out of my sinus passages and mellows to these floral kind of citrus notes. Absolutely great tequila. Really, if you're looking for somewhere to start with Blancos, I might recommend something like uh, Tapatio first. Um, I've had a deep affection with Tapatio. It's one of those ones that I'm trying to figure out where I want to put it. I think if you were looking for something with a little more nuance, I would go with this. That's my quick um, assumption, quick tasting profile based on what I've gotten out of Suerte Tequila. You guys enjoy. Thank you so much uh, to the producers of this tequila. I really appreciate you and hope you get some uh, more sales from a good review. This is absolutely amazing tequila. Highly recommended that you check it out. And I will see you guys again soon. I'm going to review another bottle right now.